Hi everyone, welcome to week three. Last week we discussed web exploitation, and today we're going to build on some of the concepts we learned and talk about some web application attacks that take place in today's world. So how do web application attacks take place? Web exploitation attacks take place when vulnerabilities arise in web applications due to improper coding, coding errors, new vulnerabilities found by hackers, Examples of some of these security risks include injection, identity, and authentication failures. And a really good resource to learn about some of these attacks is OWASP Top 10. The OWASP Top 10 is a standard awareness document for developers and web application security. It represents a broad consensus about the most critical security risks to web applications. And um, so... Let's talk about injection attacks, which are some of the most common attacks. Code injection is a general term for attack types, which consist of injecting code that is then interpreted, executed by the application. This type of attack exploits poor handling of untrusted data. OWASP, um, it's from the OWASP site. Um, so basically what this is saying is code injection attacks are when you're able to input code and then that code gets interpreted so for example when you're logging into a website and instead of putting your username you put code and that code is malicious and you want it to you know do something bad and it actually executes that code that means that the input is not being property properly sanitized or filtered which is allowing the code to execute never should any you know input um, place where users submit input should never should that be you know executing code so that's basically what an injection attack is and two very common type of code injection attacks are cross-site scripting and sql or sql injection it's called we're going to discuss um, SQL injection attacks as these are a common form of web application attacks and a lot of CTFs have many challenges requiring you to be familiar with SQL injection. So let's take a look at what exactly SQL is. SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it's a programming language that is used to communicate with databases. It is a language used for managing data in a relational database it's used to retrieve, put, update, or delete data from a table, and it uses a select statement to retrieve info from a database. So basically, you know, this is a language that is used to for web applications and databases to communicate. And an example of SQL or SQL is used is let's say um, you know, you're on a website and data needs to be retrieved um, from a table. For example, if you're logging into a website and the data you put in needs to be matched with the database that holds all the passwords and usernames to verify you, then a SQL query would be used for that. So what happens in a SQL injection attack? Basically, SQL injection is a code injection attack that takes advantage of how a server interacts with the database server. So for example, how a web application server will interact with a database server. In a SQL injection attack, the query is manipulated to make it do something it's not supposed to do. And some possibilities of what that could result in include access to data, bypassing authentication, changing data. So SQL injection is a very you know dangerous attack if it is able to be successfully executed. So let's talk about how one would check for SQL injection on, you know, if to see if um, a web application is vulnerable to SQL injection. Well, you can use a special symbol like the apostrophe to see if there is an error and how the input gets interpreted. Um, why does this work is because the first, this um, apostrophe is used in SQL as a string terminator and if it's not filtered by the application, it would lead to an incorrect query. So we would get some sort of an error message. And if we get some sort of an error message, that means that the web application is interpreting that apostrophe as code when it should really be filtered. So that means that, you know, our web application could have some sort of a SQL vulnerability that we can further exploit. 
Let's take a look now at how SQL queries are, you know, crafted. And let's take a look at an example of a SQL query. So this is a very traditional basic example. So basically what this is saying is select all, basically se saying select everything um, from the table users where the username and this is column this these are the column values where the username is equal to the username and the password is equal to password and this could be any values and we're going to further explore it in just a second of how these queries are actually structured so you know um this is what a traditional sql query looks like now if you're able to manipulate this query what you could do is right here you know, um, just put in your username right here. And what you could do is password. Instead of just putting a password, you can manipulate it by adding this in the in between and this um, starting from the apostrophe. So in within the apostrophe, it has the apostrophe or one is equal to one. And so what would happen is one is always equal to one. So it would, if it is vulnerable to SQL injection, then this would become true. And because it's true, it would void everything and it would, you know, give you a list of all the users where, you know, username is that. Um, and, you know, it would give you all of the information that you're looking for if it was able to successfully execute. And this is one way that the query could be manipulated. Let's go back to our logging in with the username and password on the website example. So let's say you're logging in with the username and the uh, password and the, um, and the website verifies that data against a database with a SQL query. What if we could manipulate the query to give us back all of the usernames and passwords? And that's exactly how we would do it because one is equal to one this query would get passed and we would be able to bypass it. So let's try to understand how the SQL queries are crafted. So here are some common SQL commands that it's good to be familiar with. So select, update, um, select, you know, extracts data from database, update, updates the data, delete. So you can even, you know, if you are, um, you know, wanting, to, if some hacker wants to delete all the data and if, they're able to they can delete data by crafting you know um, a query um, you can insert information into a database you can create table alter drop the table so basically um, these are some of the common commands that could come and help um, in handy when crafting a SQL query and when you're trying to manipulate it I would suggest that when doing any type of SQL problems that you keep these commands handy so that's easier for you to craft the SQL queries. To better understand how to craft queries, let's take a look at some of these commands. Let's start off with the select statement. So the select statement will return the data that you specify it to return. For example, let's take a look at how a SQL select statement is crafted. You can specify the column that you want to select from a table. You can specify multiple columns from a table. You can also specify a specific value from a table. So look, taking a look at the first um, query, it says select column one from table name. So for example, whatever table you have, you can select the column one from that table and it would return to you results in a table with just the column one values. Let's take a look at the second example. Select ID from table one. What this would do it would results, um, the results would be the ID column and all the values in it. If you want to select all the values in the table, you would do select asterisk as asterisk stands for all from table one. If you wanted to select all the values from table one where the ID is equal to one, there, then it would return to you the um, ID, the username, and the password. And if you wanted to select all from table one where username is equal to user one, it would, you know, it would result in the ID 
one, the username user one, and the password ABC. So you can really play around with these queries. For example, if you wanted to select, let's say you wanted to select just all um, users that had passwords um, ABC, the query would look something like select username from table one where password is equal to ABC. That's what the query would look like. So once you understand how to craft these queries, you can also understand a little bit about how you can manipulate them in your favor when doing SQL injection attacks. So that's a little bit about the SQL select statement. Let's take a look at the SQL union statement. Now the union statement is used to combine two or more select statements. So you can combine two select statements that we looked at above. For example, we have two tables here, table one and table two. If we want to select username from table one, but we also want to select username from table two, and we want the result to be in a table, we could use the union statement to combine these two statements. So what we would do is we would put select username from table one, union select username from table two, and it would give us all the usernames from both tables. So the result would be user one, user two, user one, three, four, user two, five, six, and all the other username values that exist in that table. So union is a very helpful statement if you don't want to, you know, if you have multiple tables that you want to select from. Moving on, let's take a look at SQL string concatenation. So the two bars represent string concatenation and logical or. Uh, this uses the double pipe sequence, the double bars, which is a string concatenation operator. So it concatenates the results. For example, if you want your results to be displayed in a particular manner, what would happen is you would do select username, the bar sign, comma, bar sign, password from table one. What this would do it is it would select the username and concatenate that with the password and there would be a comma in between. You could also do select ID, concatenate, comma, username, concatenate, comma, password, concatenate from table one. And if you wanted to be really specific, you could do select username, concatenate, password, from table one where ID is equal to one, then it would only give you user one ABC as the result. So that's a little bit about string concatenation. It's important to understand how these commands work to understand again how to manipulate them later on. So those are some basic commands that might come in handy when crafting these SQL queries. It's highly encouraged that you watch the web security workshop from last year which really covers all of this in much greater detail another powerful way to bypass login and to manipulate sql queries is commenting out the rest of the statement and it's one of the most popular you know sql injection techniques so what how can you comment out the rest of the statement when you comment out the rest of the statement anything after that becomes irrelevant so in that way, if the database accepts that query, then you can just comment out everything and it, everything else after is not going to matter and you're going to get what you want. So there are three common ways to comment out the statement in SQL. That is two dashes, a number sign or hash sign, and a slash, an asterisk. So an example could be where you would put username, you could put admin apostrophe dash dash, admin apostrophe number sign, admin apostrophe slash star. You can also do this with R1 equals one method. All you would do is put your apostrophe or one is equal to one and then just comment out the rest of the statement. So if you are following any of these, what the query could look like is, for example, let's select star from members where username is equal to whatever and password is equal to whatever. And if you put your admin apostrophe dash dash, it would just cancel out the rest of the statement. So it would be select all from members where username is equal to admin. 
So it would just give, it would select all of those members and it would return the results to you because the rest of the statement gets commented out. This is another popular way to manipulate SQL queries. How about we take a look at some examples now and see how we can use these queries in an actual live example. So to demonstrate some of the SQL queries that we learned, I'm going to be using the challenge Irish Name Repo from Pico CTF. So let's visit our link over here. Right off the bat, we just have a page with a bunch of people's pictures. Let's see the support page. Support says something about a SQL error. So obviously that's a good indication that this probably has to do with SQL injection attack. And we also have a login page. We can try passing our apostrophe to see if we get some sort of error message. Nothing is really returned to us. It still, it doesn't mean that it's not susceptible to SQL injection attack. Let's try our commenting out method that we learned. Let's see if that works. And yeah, that, that one works. Let's try and see if some of the other ones work. So let's try the number sign. So that one doesn't work. It might be included in a filter. Um, it might not be allowed to be used in this login form. Let's try the slash with the asterisk and see if that works. That one works as well. That's great. Let's try the one that, let's try or, let's try or, one is equal to one and let's comment out that that um statement let's see if that works that one works as well let's go back and try some of the other ones that we talked about let's talk let's try this one right here and see if that works where it's just one is equal to one and we can also put this in the password we can just put username and just you can put whatever you want in here and that works as well so this was a demonstration of some of the possible ways that you could you know manipulate the query obviously there's going to be a lot of trial and error because some of the problems might not that be that easy some of them might have filters so some symbols might be filtered that you're not allowed to use in those forms so it's really um, recommended that you practice and get familiar with sql and practice some of the past problems to make it easier and also definitely watch the workshop from last year that is it for today's workshop. I hope everybody enjoyed the workshop today. And as always, the resource hub is a great place for links and more resources as well as the Pico Primer. Thank you for watching.